Hi, I'm Marcus Hutzel. And in this video, I wanna talk about a budget shotgun microphone option that I use for my virtual meetings and that may help you decide if this is a route you want to go because given the proper environment and setup, shotgun mics can sound really great. A lot of people are looking to get a shotgun mic and that's what I wanted for my office setup at work as well. So I found this mic on Amazon. It's the Lix Pro CMG50. It cost me about 50 bucks and I've been using it for about a year now. And I wanted something at my desk at work that's just always there, ready to go for having a quick virtual meeting when I'm at work and I don't have all of my fancy mics and cameras that I usually have access to when I'm in my home studio. And I wanted something relatively cheap, something that's affordable and something that's maybe an option for people to upgrade their sound quality over maybe their onboard laptop mic. And my personal preference is to mount the microphone up and over me and out of my way out of my visual frame. I just don't like microphones right in front of me. They can get in my way and they can block your face when in a virtual meeting. So I needed something that could work well boomed overhead. Kind of like you see here, I've got two microphones boomed overhead recording this video. So that's why I was looking for a shotgun mic. So I found and chose this Lix Pro CMG50. It's a super cardioid shotgun mic and I chose it for a couple of very specific reasons. And so far for a very budget shotgun mic for virtual meetings, it's been great for what it is and for the price. It's not the best mic in the world, but it's certainly not the worst. It sounds pretty good, but it does have a decent amount of self noise or hiss that may bother you. But I'd venture to say that most average users aren't going to notice the bit of hiss and won't care. But the self noise is there and audio professionals will definitely hear it and I hear it, but I'm also just a stickler for ultra clean audio most of the time. The noise isn't overbearing, but it is definitely present more so than more expensive and better quality mics. And again, we're talking about a $50 to $70 shotgun mic, so very low on the budget end. But this noise is also relatively and easily cleaned up by running it through streaming software like OBS or using the virtual meetings built in noise suppression settings. And if you do one of those two options, this is a great mic to have for those quick meetings. And I do just that. I usually just enable the noise suppression in Zoom or Microsoft Teams or Google Meets, etc., and it cleans up the sound just fine. And I'm not using this mic to record high quality audio. I'm not using it on film shoots or recording interviews, and I don't use it to record my own videos here for YouTube. I'm mainly just using it to have virtual meetings, and for that, it's fine. And I'll have some raw audio examples of Lix Pro CMG50 at the end of this video, but during the video, I'm going to put down here which microphone you're listening to because I'm gonna switch back and forth between my typical Rode VideoMic NTG and the Lix Pro CMG50. And during those times, I will also put whether I've applied noise suppression to the CMG50 because I think it needs it most of the time. So I'll note down here which mic you're listening to and whether I've applied noise suppression in Adobe Premiere. Again, raw audio examples of this mic near the end of the video. So my goal with this video was to try to come up with a shotgun mic solution to use for your online meetings and virtual calls at your computer setup for under $100 because that's a good price point and a good title for a video because most shotgun mics cost a lot more. And I tried, I really did, but the true cost came in just over $100 at the time that I purchased these items. And that's really because of the need to actually mount this mic because the mic doesn't come with any sort of stand or even an XLR cable. And you'll need both of those things. But these two items, the mic and a USB audio interface to get into my computer cost me just $100. And I spent $13 on an articulating arm and I already had an XLR cable. So it can come in under $100 if you have a stand and cable and if the mic were to drop back down to the price at which I was able to buy it. So is this microphone worth it over a different style and possibly cheaper USB mic? Well, for me it is. Again, mainly because I just do not want a microphone in front of me. I needed to be able to get the mic up and out of the way. And I've been using this setup at my office at work for well over a year now, and it's quick, it's always ready to go. And this mic had some very specific features that I wanted that help its sound quality and usability. And there are even cheaper shotgun mics out there, but this one was the best one I tried for a number of reasons. So again, this is the Lix Pro CMG50 10 inch shotgun microphone. It's an XLR microphone and therefore has a balanced output to use with XLR cables. So no direct USB or smart capabilities, but it was only $49 from Amazon when I bought it. It has gone up in price to about $70 at the time of recording this video, but I still think it's worth it for a budget shotgun mic. 
but of course you'll have to get this microphone into your computer if you want to use it for virtual calls. So you'll need a USB audio interface that has an XLR input and preferably the ability to provide phantom power since this is a condenser mic and needs power. Although it can be powered with a single AA battery as well. It comes with a foam windscreen, a decent shock mount that can be mounted either via a cold shoe or quarter 20 mount. And it comes with a quarter 20 to 5 8 adapter for mounting on standard microphone stands. And it comes with a small carrying case. So for your input into your computer, as I always recommend and what I use is a Behringer UM2 USB audio interface. It's typically only about $45 and I've seen it for as little as about $20 on some random sales here and there. And the UM2 is definitely worth it. And you can always upgrade the mic later, but still use the UM2 as an input to your computer. And the UM2 has a headphone jack and main outputs and a second instrument input, so it's a bit more versatile than a lot of USB only mics. The UM2 has a pretty clean preamp as well, and I found that with this mic, with it boomed up high and out of the way, that I need to be in the upper range of that gain knob on the UM2. And if you watch my other video on the UM2 versus the M Audio M Track Solo, you'll know why I always recommend the UM2 as a great budget interface, because the UM2's input gain is pretty clean even when in the upper ranges of the knob. Whereas if I were to use this mic with the M Audio M Track Solo, I'd probably have problems because the M Track Solo has a gain jump issue when you get into the upper range of the input where all of a sudden the signal jumps way up and can distort very quickly. But the UM2 doesn't have that problem. And I find that I have to have the input gain on the UM2 almost all the way up with this mic. So I'm good to go because the UM2's gain is pretty clean and smooth all the way up to maximum. As far as mounting this mic where I want it, I spent $13, that's with tax, for an articulating arm. And it's plenty strong for this mic. And it's actually holding both mics right now. So it's plenty strong for this mic, or even two in this case. And honestly, some articulating arms are less expensive than some desktop stands. And I certainly recommend a boom arm like this for these types of mics on your desk setup because it just gets the mic up and out of the way versus sitting on a stand on top of your desk and more in your way. And granted with this particular setup, you can see that I have my articulating arm mounted onto an additional articulating arm and I have it the same way at my office to get some more height out of it. But even this single cheap arm by itself should be tall enough for most average users to still boom the mic up and out of the way if you mount it on the desk surface itself. That of course just depends on how your desk is set up, but as you can see here, this cheap arm is enough to still boom the mic above me. And even though the mic doesn't come with an XLR cable, you can get an XLR cable for as little as $8 for about a six foot cable, but you will need an XLR cable to get from the mic to the UM2. So with the mic, the audio interface, the articulating arm, and the cable, if I were to have bought an XLR cable, my cost came to about $125. Still not bad for some modularity, versatility, and future upgrade paths. Now the three main reasons that I chose this specific microphone other than the cheap price are number one, it has a low cut filter right on the mic, which starts to roll off frequencies below 100 hertz. This was kind of a big deal for me. I wanted a mic that had a low cut filter because having the ability to cut some of the low end out right on the mic means less of those low end frequencies and some of the banging around on the desk won't even make it over to my computer, which just makes my virtual meetings sound better with less possibility of unwanted noises like vibrations, or low frequencies like air conditioners entering the computer. And this is one of the very few microphones in this price range that I could find that actually had a low cut filter. I find that low cut or high pass filters, same thing, are usually necessary on almost any vocal, as you usually just don't need all that low end, especially for just having a meeting. Number two, it's size. It's only 10 inches long, so not super long. Whereas many other budget shotgun mics are about 14 inches, like this newer model, and a 14 inch microphone, although it doesn't sound very long, is actually a lot longer than you think and takes up quite a bit of space at your desk. And I just don't think a lot of people would want that long microphone dangling over their desk at all times. It's really quite the difference in length and can look a bit intimidating. So the Lix Pro is just a more compact option. Number three, it can be powered by a single AA battery if needed. So you don't have to have phantom power, but most audio interfaces already have phantom power capabilities and I'd rather not deal with having to remember to turn the mic on or off because if you use a battery and forget to turn the mic off, it will just drain the battery. So having this hooked up to my Behringer UM2 at all times means I can just leave the mic in the on position and the UM2 provides that phantom power. So I just never have to remember to turn the mic on or off. It's just always there ready to go. 
The battery option also means that you can use this mic directly with your DSLR or mirrorless camera if you wanted. Just put in a single AA battery and that will provide power to the mic and make it work. Then you just need a specific adapter cable that adapts a balanced XLR signal to an unbalanced 3.5 millimeter signal. Just remember that you'll need to make sure the cable is not wired one to one because if you're plugging into a 3.5 millimeter jack like on your camera, most of those jacks are expecting a stereo signal, not a balanced signal. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, then watch the linked video below where I do talk about cables like this and how to choose the right one because they can look identical on the outside. It's just more important on how they're wired internally, but it can be done very cheaply with the proper cable. Also keep in mind that shotgun mics may not be the best solution for you depending on the sound of your space or your office. Shotgun mics can start to sound weird on voices if they're in a room that has maybe low ceilings or a lot of reverb or reverberation. So if you're in a room that has hard floors, hard walls, maybe lots of windows, those hard surfaces will reflect sound and bounce the sound around the room and create a lot of reverb in your room. Shotgun mics are designed to cancel out sounds that enter the mic from the sides. That's what all those little slots or tubes are on the side of a shotgun mic. And generally that's a good thing and it's designed to make the mic more directional. But if your room is more reverberant, then your voice is going to also bounce around the room and your voice will then enter the mic from not only the front of the mic, because that's where the mic's pointed, but since your voice is bouncing around, it will also enter the mic in the sides and the mic will start to cancel out what it hears. It doesn't know the difference between what it's trying to capture and what's entering from the sides. It can just start to cancel out your voice and make it sound phasey in weird ways. But if your room is less reverberant, kind of like the space I'm in, then you should be generally okay. So a room with carpet, soft goods, or even specific sound absorption panels will help shotgun mics sound better in smaller rooms. But I use this Lix Pro shotgun mic in my work at office, which has some sound treatment, but overall it's a fairly loud, semi-reverberant space. And it still works just fine in that space, and I don't really have many issues with the overall sound. So just keep those things in mind and listen carefully. Now, as I record this video, Rode just came out with the Rode Go 2 mini shotgun mic that can also be used as a direct USB mic for only $100. And if that mic had existed when I needed a mic for my computer, I probably would have gotten that one. It seems like a great mic, it's made by Rode, but it didn't exist a year ago and you lose out on some of the features that mic offers if you don't take the time to boot up the software every time you use it and you don't get those features when using it as a standalone mic like on your camera. With this setup, since it's modular, I can always use a different microphone or upgrade my mic, or I can use a different audio interface. I can kind of mix and match parts. This mic also has the aforementioned low cut switch right on the mic, so you don't have to boot up any software just to use the low cut filter. And you can use this mic with your DSLR or mirrorless camera as well, just like the Rode Go 2 with the proper cable, of course, as I talked about earlier. And you can use this mic with any professional audio mixer or dedicated audio recorder since it has an XLR output. So just different options for different products. You'll have to decide what works best for you. So obviously the quick setup is just, I use the articulating arm mounted to my desk, mount the mic into the arm, run my XLR cable into the Behringer UM2, plug the UM2 into my laptop with its included USB cable, then just increase the gain on the UM2 as high as I need to go without clipping the UM2's preamp, of course, all the while watching my input meters and the sound system preferences in Mac OS or Windows to ensure I don't clip there as well. Very important that you check your computer settings, not just the input on the UM2. And then the UM2 just shows up as USB audio codec in my meeting software, so I can just choose that as my input, and now the meeting platform hears me through my $50 shotgun mic. Then I can turn on the noise suppression settings if I want to help clean up the bit of hiss from the mic. Now, the main negative thing about this mic, as I mentioned a bit, and with most budget mics like this, is the hiss or the noise or self noise that's just inherent in this mic. It's not terrible, but it's there. And here's a quick unprocessed audio example for you. All right, so I'm gonna play this clip twice so you can hear the unprocessed audio from not only the Lix Pro, but also the Rode VideoMic NTG. And I'll put down here on the screen which microphone you're listening to right now. So again, just an audio test so you can hear not only the uh, way the mic picks up my voice and how I sound, but also so you can maybe hear the noise if you listen very carefully for it. And I'll be quiet real quick so you can hear the noise on whichever mic you're currently listening to. All right, so I'm gonna play this clip twice so you can hear the unprocessed audio from not only the Lix Pro, but also the Rode VideoMic NTG. 
and I'll put down here on the screen which microphone you're listening to right now. So again, just an audio test so you can hear not only the uh, way the mic picks up my voice and how I sound, but also so you can maybe hear the noise if you listen very carefully for it. And I'll be quiet real quick so you can hear noise on whichever mic you're currently listening to. So you can hear the difference in noise between my Rode VideoMic NTG and the Elix Pro Mic when both are unprocessed. But if you're listening on laptop speakers, you may not even hear it. So if you needed to record some audio with this mic, you could get away with it with some fine tuning, but it's not the best for important high-end recording needs. But since I primarily use this mic as a live microphone for virtual meetings, we're either going to hear the noise, which most people aren't going to notice on the other end of the virtual call, or we can use the virtual meeting platform's built-in noise suppression tools. So let's take a listen to how that sounds, and we'll use Zoom for this test since it's fairly easy to use for most people. All right, so what you're looking at right now, this is the actual Zoom recording. I just fed my camera and the Elix Pro CMG50 right there into Zoom, and I used Zoom to record this and dumped it into the video edit. And as you can hear, you know, it sounds really good for a $50 mic and a $50 USB audio interface. The, the hiss that I'm talking about, the self noise in this type of setting isn't really going to be that apparent. Listening back to this audio edit, I actually couldn't hear it that well. So again, I don't have any of the zoom settings turned on to suppress any noise right now. This is the raw audio and I'll be quiet for just a sec. So you can even see if you can hear it. And now if we wanted to, we can just turn on the uh, the low faint background uh, noise suppression in zoom so that that noise suppression is now on in zoom i've got it on the low setting and the low setting sounds the most natural to me the more noise suppression you start to use in these virtual meeting platforms the more robotic it gets so i'll often just leave the low setting on or i'll run the audio through obs which i'll show you here in just a sec but again this is the low noise suppression setting turned on in Zoom using the Lix Pro CMG50. All right, I want to give you one last audio example running this microphone and my camera through OBS streaming software first, and then sending my audio and video over to something like Zoom, because I think the noise suppression plugin in OBS is a little bit better than the ones in the virtual meeting software. And here's an example of that. And now what I've done is the video and audio that you're seeing, I've actually run through OBS streaming software first, and then I've used OBS's uh, audio monitor and virtual camera to send both the audio and video over to Zoom. And what I've done on my microphone, the Lix Pro CMG50, is I've put a compressor and a noise suppression filter in OBS. So the audio you're hearing now is going into OBS first, it's being processed and noise taken out there and then sent over to Zoom. Sometimes I do this because I just have different options. I think the OBS filters can sound a little bit better than some of the meeting platforms noise filters. So this is how I use it sometimes, running it through OBS and then over into Zoom just to give me a few more options and to appease my technical mind. Doesn't sound half bad, does it? So that's it. This budget shotgun mic has been working very well for me for my virtual meetings at my office at work. I use it almost daily. I clean up the audio a bit using OBS or the built-in noise suppression with any of the virtual meeting platforms. The mic doesn't have to be in my video frame and I sound better than using the onboard mic on my laptop since my laptop is usually further away from me on a laptop shelf. I also have the option of upgrading the microphone later or using this microphone with an audio mixer or my camera and still having a USB audio interface that gives me a few more options as well. Because I often think it's the craftsman, not the tools that make for a good product. So can you take a $50 mic and make it sound great? I think it'll work just fine for virtual meetings. So a fairly budget, but still decent solution to upgrade your audio for your virtual meetings. It isn't the best mic in the world. It isn't the worst. It may or may not be more user-friendly than a direct USB mic for you, but it gives you some upgrade paths for your mic and or to swap out your USB audio interface later. And you don't have a microphone right in front of you blocking your view to the world and blocking the world's view of you. And that's how I like it. Good luck. Happy virtual meeting. Later. Almost had, almost had it, almost had it.